Hey, what's up, guys? It's Josh, KI6NAZ, and during Hamvention, I went to the MFJ booth and I picked up a Zaiju G90. This is a pretty intriguing, portable, a little bit higher than QRP radio, and let's check it out today. So the quick details on the Zaiju G90 is it is an all HF band portable 20 watt radio. It features an antenna tuner that takes anywhere from 12 seconds to two seconds once it's used to the impedance of the antenna you're using for the frequency that you're on. Tunes the radio. And it features a very nice screen. It's not a touch screen, but the details are <laughs> fairly feature rich. It has a nice waterfall, it has a nice SWR sweep for the antenna that you're on, and most of these are controllable and settable. An interesting feature that the G90 has right out of the box that the Zaiju company is coming out with the rest of their line is a CW decode mode, and it does pretty well. Important to note, the G90 draws about 0.3 amps on receive. In CW mode, in 20 watts output, I was pulling about 4 amps on transmit. So the Zaiju G90 is a 20 watt, pretty portable radio with a built-in antenna tuner. It supports all band HF, AM, single sideband, and CW modes. Switching the bands is a process of pushing the buttons on the top, and modes are the buttons next to it. As of today, I own the Zaiju X5105 and now have the G90. And they fit similar, albeit slightly different roles in kind of an outdoor portable situation. The Zaiju X5105, five watt output, QRP only radio is a great little backpack portable. It's pretty rugged and you can just take it and go. With the G90, you're gonna need an external power source, but it still has that tuner. It has the enhanced features for CW decode and that really nice, very information packed screen. One of the most compelling aspects of the Zaiju G90 is its price point. It's actually $449 today on the MFJ website. That makes it $150 cheaper than the X5105. So for $150 cheaper, you're actually getting more functionality and a higher power output. The only drawback of that is that you will have to supply your own power source, likely some kind of lithium ion battery. Although the front panel is pretty small due to its portability, the buttons being kind of a much smaller, they're very easy to press, they have a really good tactile response, and they are dual press. So there's a short press and then a long press. And if you push the function button, that opens up a third option for setting up and changing different settings. Working your way around the radio is pretty simple. You have a power button here. An interesting note, this light will illuminate when it thinks you are zero beating a CW station. Volume control is at the top. If you short press volume, that switches it to headphones. Headphones allows you to output to the headphone jack on the side, otherwise it goes to the speaker. Below that is the multifunction knob. If you single click, th click that, you get squelch control. In my case though, I have it set to control the scale of the waterfall. Right now we are in CW decode mode. If you want to remove that, pretty simple. You just hold down the key button and the waterfall comes back. And that waterfall, although small, is actually really useful. Right now it's a little high, but if I drop down the waterfall, you see it clears out and gives you a nice sea of blue. With that, if you click the VFO button, you'll see that we're moving through the steps for your control on the megahertz, megahertz roll here as you go up through the radio. The three major dials on the Zaiju G90 are the VFO, the volume control, and the multi-control. Each one of them have a press which activates a different set of settings. The multi-button actually has a menu system that you can apply different controls to it that will be default when you press it. You can control different aspects of the radio. Working around this small screen, you still get a lot of information. 
the mode you're operating in, whether you're in the A or B channel, what your filter is, what your SWR is, what your waterfall looks like, and then your signal and strength meter. Working around the top of the buttons, pushing the function button illuminates the function light, which changes some of the keys on the side. For instance, this tune button, if you hold it down, tunes the radio, but if you click it singly, it turns on and off the tune. If you go to power, it allows you to change the power output via the VFO. And under the key, or CW, you can change your keyer speed, your manual, depending on if you're a left or right iambic or a straight key. And lock actually changes the contrast of the screen. Under function, and then power, you get mic gain, input mic, or to the side. So for instance, input mic, you can change that to line, which allows you to change the audio input if you're doing digital. So for instance, regular operation, you're gonna be on the mic, you'll switch it back when you wanna use line for digital. Click it again, takes you back, hopefully. <laughs> Double click the function button, should bring you back, yeah. So basically, it, you're in standard operating mode when you can see your filtering, which is right there. We're at 2400 kilohertz for filter size. You can change that, though. And the easiest way to do that is switch your mode to CW, for instance. But if you wanted to change that further, the FL and FH allow you to change the left side and right side of your filtering for CW. Usually... You want to drag that into about 400 kilohertz. That's kind of a sweet spot. Some of the features that I like in the X5105 are also on the G90, like the antenna sweep, which gives you a graphical view of whatever antenna you have connected to the radio. Now, one thing that I have been looking for for a very long time is a ICOM 7300-like data connection. I'd like one single cable to be able to connect to a radio, a portable radio would be preferred, to be able to do digital modes out in the field. Now, while the G90 doesn't have that single cable yet, it gets pretty close and it's very easy to set up in a WSJTX. For anybody interested in my settings in WSJTX, here they are. Pretty straightforward. Uh, ICOM IC7000 is the radio I use and it works pretty well. The G90 comes with a USB cable which connects to the front side port on the radio and that allows it to PTT. In the back there is an ACC or accessory port which you can use to connect for audio. I am using the CE19 adapter interface device that is also sold by MFJ. It works with the X5105 and works with the G90. That allows me the USB connection to PTT the radio and the audio interface to the CE19 to connect to my computer. With those two connections, I am able to work digital. These are the cables I use to do digital. I use a USB mic and input for speaker an ACC cable for the back of the radio as well as the back of the C19. You have your USB cable for PTTing the radio and then I have a splitter that goes from the stereo output of the radio on the side into a mic and speaker cable. That's all you really need to be able to do digital modes with this radio. This is a compelling radio because it is more power than a traditional QRP radio. Not yet 100 watts but it's also much smaller and much cheaper. So this is kind of like a solid recommendation for an entry-level radio for someone on a budget. It has a standard PL259, meaning you can use regular full-size antennas without having to use an adapter. By and large, I I'm pretty impressed by it. I think what separates this from the X5105, if you are considering those two options, is that screen. That screen, as uh, someone starting out in radio, is really going to like seeing the information all up front on the screen the way that the G90 shows you. Walking around the radio, you have headphone jack on the side of the face plate and the connection for USB. In the back, you have a key, an IO port, and then the accessory plug, as well as your power and your PL259. 
What makes this also um, kind of more interesting in the functionality that you can technically deploy with it, it comes with a serial cable and a Allen hex key for disconnecting the front panel so that you could remote it, technically like in a car. So in some ways this is competing with a QRP radio, and in other ways, it's actually competing with something like an, an FT891 by Yesu, in that you can also deploy this in a mobile application. What I like to do at the end of all my videos is give you a would I buy it or would I not buy it? And really that's an excuse for me to kind of uh, suss out who I think the right person is for this radio. And there are multiple people who this radio would be good for. One would be somebody who's looking for something that's portable, not necessarily really ultra portable like a QRP 5 watt tiny radio but somebody who wants the information on the screen plus the 20 watts. Someone that potentially would like this is if they're new to HF. This would be a good introduction HF radio. Lots of information on that screen. The price point is right where it should be and it has a tuner and that tuner is pretty good. The last person is kind of a confluence of the QRP person, but somebody who wants to use digital modes may be out in the field. This is small enough that you can take it out into the field without much fuss and it still has 20 watts of output for using FT8 or something along those lines. I think this is a really good showing from Zaiju. I think they're going in the right direction with HF and they're targeting an interesting area of the market, an introductory radio that has portable capability and a 20 watt output with an internal tuner. Those scratch the itch for many people that are in the market. If you find this radio interesting, the link will be in the description to go check it out at MFJ, which is probably the cheapest place you're gonna find it in the United States. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking that bell. The bell ensures you will get updates on when I post new videos or when I live stream, which is generally Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we try and talk about many new and interesting things in amateur radio. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later.